Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Now today's show will be the last of my six part series on Australian wines. The first four were donated to me by one of my Instagram followers, Jason Carley, shortly after I took the advanced exam last year. This wine I purchased mainly to use for my tasting group but since I'm concentrating on Australia, I thought it would be a good idea to review it instead. The Three Rings Winery was founded in 2004 by David Hickenbotham after his family had been a premier supplier of grapes since 1971. Their vineyards are located in the Barossa Valley in South Australia. They have an average age of 35 years. Three Rings represents the three wines they produce. This wine, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and a single vineyard reserve Shiraz. And that's really it for the winery's background. So I'll go ahead and mention that I've resurrected my merchandise line. I've retired my 1337 wine line, but you know what? I have a WWTV line and a hashtag outstanding line of merchandise. The hashtag outstanding line is all about positivity and is based upon my response of outstanding when asked how I'm doing. I have polos, t-shirts, and accessories on Zazzle. Those are really for the WWTV side. Now check out this sweet logo t-shirt I'm showing you or the polo I'm wearing. The outstanding line is all t-shirts. So far, I only have a small number of variations of t-shirts for both lines with more to come. There's a link below in the description, so please check them out and maybe buy one or two. All right, now that you've bought a shirt or two, <laughs> here are the stats for the wine. The 2017 Three Rings Shiraz, Barossa Valley, 100% Shiraz, 14.6% ABV, the pH is 3.62, the total acidity is 6.5 grams per liter, and the RS is 1.7 grams per liter. All right, let's get into this wine. So I'm excited because this literally is the last of the wines I'm reviewing. I kind of did all the whites first, I recorded them all first, and then I did all the reds first. Um, instead of a uh, like doing them in the actual episode order. And then by now, I'm gonna go out on a limb. You probably saw, I had an episode about Master of the World um, wine thing. I'm planning on recording. I thought I was gonna record it today, but then the seminar I'm supposed to watch is actually not happening in for another couple days. So I'll wait till then. The cool thing is I'll be able to watch that one live. Of course, by the time you're watching this, I would have already watched it live. Anyway, this wine, I had, back in my Morton's days, I had my rep taste me on it a while ago. So we're probably talking three, probably, well, probably like four or five years ago. And uh, I remember liking it. Um, I didn't add it to the set, and I don't remember why. Oh, you know what? No, it was on the set. It was on the set. I forgot, forgot how it was, but I remember tasting it. I remember liking it. So I bought it for tasting group last year sometime in playing on bringing it so i wanted like a, i knew it was a good quality australian shiraz so i wanted to do it now this episode last episode maybe one of the episodes you may have heard me say shiraz instead of shiraz that's because that's how the aussies pronounce it they're the ones that came up with calling the syrah grape shiraz the theory is that it kind of got mutilated or whatever bastardized through south africa actually from you know those those crazy Huguenots, not really Huguenots. I mean, they were there, but the crazy Dutch that, you know, invaded South Africa, basically, um, and how they, you know, messed up English. So <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so the thinking is, or one of the theories is that Syrah got mutated into Shiraz, um, how they pronounce it. And they actually, I think the South Africans pronounce it Shiraz too. They don't, they don't say Shiraz. Shiraz is a town in Iran, okay? No relation, by the way. Literally no relation. It's just coincidental the name exists. All right, so on to this wine. This is a really, really deep, um, I would almost call it par parable. What's parable? I don't know. Normally I would have like stopped and started, but we leave all these mistakes in. 
really, uh, really deep ruby purple. Uh, very heavy staining on the glass. So Shiraz is known for that. This is 100% Shiraz too. So uh, they didn't cut it with anything. I mentioned uh, in my in my Darnberg Hermit uh, crab that uh, Shiraz and Viognier, I think I mentioned it, are commonly mixed, but not in this case. And when they put uh, Viognier and Shiraz, it's not like a lot. Actually, Syrah in Viognier in Northern Rhone is not uncommon. I mean, good deep color. All right, let's check out the uh, let's check out the aromatics. So super fruity, man. Really, you know, heavy on that blackberry, blueberry, raspberry. More the black, more the black and red fruits. Not really so much in the red fruits. I do get that chemical, you know, that roasted coffee, because that's what that's what it is, fur for all, whatever it's called. But you know, it comes across as something different. You've heard it in my last couple episodes when I've talked about it, but. But this is a little more prominent. It's not as subtle as the other two. A little leather, vanilla, clove for sure, baking spice. I'd even, mainly because I know it's Syrah or Shiraz, um, I could even kind of say there might be a little head shop in this, a little patchouli, but that really is more a Northern Rhone thing for me than it coming outside of France. Or it has to be a Syrah made in a old world style, which this is not. But you can smell really the ripeness of fruit. So this is, you know, definitely a big boy. 14.6 alcohol. That's probably precise when they get, when they don't do halves and zeros, this is probably the actual alcohol. That's my assumption. And that's why I've been told by people who should know. I just taste it. There's a sweetness to the fruit, almost like a really um, overripe, uh, raisination to it. This should not be confused for anything other than Australian Shiraz. However, with that said, I mean, preponderance of very, very ripe fruit. And it turns more blue to me on the blueberry, boysenberry, plum, purple fruit. Uh, the blackberries there, but not as prominent. I could confuse this with Zinfandel. That fruit is so ripe and the alcohol is high. This is a high octane wine. But the coffee, the roasted coffee would probably take me away from that because I mentioned Syrah and Pinot Noir. Both, both those grapes will present that to me very often in the new world, not necessarily in the old world. And I mean that, that specific chemical taste and aroma that's roasted coffee, but related to something else. I'll just say bug spray. This is more prominent and it's not, it's just, it doesn't turn me off on the wine because enough everything else is like, this is delicious wine. It's only 1.7 grams per liter sugar. And that's not a lot by any means, but I would, I could see people considering this kind of sweet. Now, two reasons why. The ripeness of fruit, very, very ripe fruit. And that translates into higher alcohol already. High alcohol, the higher the alcohol, the sweeter something tastes. So specifically wine in this case. So this is not a sweet wine by any means, but I can see someone saying it's kind of sweet, but they would be like, oh, I can taste it. Now that alcohol is high octane. There's a little bit of bourbon, like lactones, whiskey lactones in this. And we don't know what the, what the uh, oak aging regimen is, but you know, there's probably some new oak in this, not a ton, not like hundred percent, but there's definitely some new oak in this. And then probably from first and second use or first and second year oak too. Yeah. pH is right where it needs to be, 3.62. If you're a fan of big, juicy, bold Australian Shirazes, you should buy this wine. I like this wine. It's not my go-to, kind of like, you know, just Pinot Noir in general. It's not my go-to wine. Chardonnay is not my go-to wine, but it's a wine I definitely can enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a little candied, a little confectionery, a little like... Um, yeah, a little candy-fied. It tastes much sweeter than it actually is. But yeah, I can see I can see people just crushing this wine. Really like it's of crowd pleaser. And I don't mean that in the euphemism way. Um, a lot of times crowd pleaser for me is kind of like, I don't like the wine, but I know a lot of people, other people will. I do like the wine. So I'm with the in crowd, I guess, or I'm with the crowd. Yeah, check it out.
if, if, you, if this is your style of wine, totally get it. If it's not your style of wine, you're probably not going to like it. But if you like these big, bold Australian Shirazes, yeah, this is totally up your alley. All right, so that's going to be today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and tell all your friends. And until next time, drink some Aussie Shiraz. Cheers, mate.